So this is the um, concert that we recorded in February of last year in Toronto. Um, at the time, we thought that we were probably going to end up releasing it as a DVD. Um, however, I didn't think it was going to take us a year. <laughs> That's how things work in time. It's true. Um, the show obviously has evolved now, and uh, so it's kind of weird to have to watch back to a show that we did a year ago. Uh, well, I think especially because this concert in itself is a little different than the actual concert was for people that were there in Scamda set list, they'll notice that the um, actual running order of songs is different, but that's because so much of this year has changed um, the way we play and our set list, and I mean, set list is really important, it's almost like the ingredients to a, to a recipe, if I may be so cliched, if you don't have the right amount or the right, if you don't add the sugar at the right time, you know, things going to get all screwed up, and I think I bet song is a great way to start the set, it's a really powerful song, I think it's the one song we all extremely, like, worry about and stress about because it's a hard song yeah for sure and it definitely works off the top it gets uh it gets uh, what's happening I don't know what. oh i guess you can hear yourself i was just thinking your microphone didn't look like no, aimed no. at your mouth no i can i can hear i have the headphones i've been i've been given that that duty i think i've been a song too it's not like the most it's not the catchiest song it's not the first time i heard it i didn't have it in my head but there's something about the arrangement and the words and the melody of it that's extremely hooky. Like the whole thing itself is like really. Anyway, so I think it's a great way to start and a, a good way to start, especially when we were. Like I found like when we were opening for the Killers or opening for bands on this record, I felt like it was a good song because it gets people's attention and it's really different and it's a really strong song. Yeah, definitely. So we'll let our hair down a bit. It's true. What hair we have to let down. Mm-hmm. Chris does not let his hair down, but in his head he does. I think he had long hair at one point. I think I heard that once, didn't he? I don't, he has hair in his waist or something? I don't think he had that long of hair. Although he did have a goatee. So it's like he's... I find that when guys have goatees, when they get rid of them, it's like they go back into... They go, they're like five years younger. They look five years younger. So um, we are actually right now doing this commentary in in Orlando, Florida. We're in a hotel room and we, it's the last little bit we have of this DVD to do. And... Uh, and it's it's been quite the quite the ordeal and uh just to set up this little little uh, sound recording thing and so um if you hear any pops or crackles and you think to yourself my god taking these are so they're so lo-fi um we, are. Th- so, we really for you for picking up on we it, really so <laughs> we really are we don't even have mic stands and so hopefully this commentary doesn't sound too uh too noisy but anyway um uh so when we did this when we did this concert in in uh in toronto we'd actually been on tour uh, since August of that year, um, the, uh, I guess prior. Holy drummer February. moment. See all that drum footage? It's true, there's a lot of drum footage. A lot, whoever was on his side really seemed to like him a lot. Um, anyway, we had done a, we'd done a lot of touring, and this was uh, this was the big Canadian tour, and it was an exciting time for us. We had a lot of the venues that we were playing were new to us. We had never played the Phoenix, for instance, which is where we were playing in Toronto. Yeah, we had played it. Well, we'd opened for somebody, but we, or we we'd ourselves. never done our own shows. Never done our own shows, which was great for us. Like, it's a... Uh, it's been, you know, seven years that we've been playing out um, live, and so it was really exciting for us to kind of play some of the venues that we uh, that we had either opened for people in, or uh, or we'd always sort of gone to see shows there and that sort of thing. So um, it was really cool. It was a really it was a really great tour. And Ted, um, our guitar player, keyboard player, who's kind of in the middle of shot there, in the middle of the shot. Um, I remember being excited by him because he had never done like a proper Canadian tour before and uh, and it was like it was it was it was a tour of first um, so that was really exciting and this was kind of the end of that tour and uh, we were just about to start another tour in um, in the United States in March with a with a great band called the Diddy Bops and that was sort of what we were looking forward to and then actually while we were out on this tour um, we uh, found out that the killers um, were interested in doing a tour with us in in April and May and so I remember on this tour being like oh my god we're never going home like it just seemed like we'd already been out on the road forever <laughs> but anyway. and after the, after the show we went out to Montreal and then we came back and did another show at the Phoenix a second night and uh, after the show it was like it was the end of the tour we were supposed to play Halifax but there were snowstorms and we all thought that the flights had been cancelled well that's what they were telling us and so we we drank after the show which we never really ever do we're kind of like we're not straight edge or anything but we definitely take playing and touring really seriously because we tour so much we don't want to we don't want to feel rough so we don't usually drink so we drank after the show it was quite funny and Hoxley Workman who produced our first record this business of art he was there and 
like our agent, all a bunch of different people. We're all sitting backstage and drinking. And we we're like, yeah, the show's going to get canceled. We're not going to have to get up at 6 in the morning and fly to Halifax. And so we all had a good time. We went back to our hotel and we ordered pizza. And Dustin Raven was there. We did all our photographs. And great night. Next morning, I get a call. Flights are not canceled. I'm so hungover. And we have to get up and plane and fly to Halifax. And it was True. actually really awesome. The show was amazing. So, But this song that we're playing right now, I know, I know, I know, um, has really developed and changed you know, since I first wrote it, and uh, it, I really like the recording of this. Actually, um, I thought I thought that the mix of the song is really, actually, really good. And I sing weird. I'm really saying I actually have never really watched the concert. I've watched tidbits, but watching it's kind of weird. It's funny how things um, Ted's hair, how things change. Yeah, haircuts, clothes, that sort of thing. It's funny because this is literally almost a year ago, and uh, it's like when you just think of. I guess the Canadian tour, I mean, I know that when I think of the Canadian tour, it really doesn't seem that long ago, except that so many things have happened in between then and now that um, it's really kind of shocking. We were, we were laughing recently, we were on this tour in Florida, and we were in a, like, you know, like just like a van or whatever, we were dragging a trailer behind us, and um, and it's really it was really reminding us of exactly a year ago, last November, when we were down in the south, we were playing shows with Melissa Farrick, and uh, there was like torrential downpours and hurricanes, and um, it's funny, like, it, again, like, so much had happened in between, but here we are again, kind of, like, right back to the start, and, um, watching this concert and putting together this DVD, which has so much of, like, what we've been doing for the last three years, it's kind of, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of, like, um, what's the right word? It's, it's so impactful, there's, like, looking back at all the things that we've kind of, kind of done, or all the shows we've played, and all the things that we sort of have accomplished, and, um, it's exciting. We're, we're, we're really excited about the DVD just because it really is kind of a milestone for us anyway, and it's kind of a marker. You know, we've been playing music now since uh, since about 1995, so um, it's kind of like almost like a 10-year, although we would never include anything that had happened in those first five years of, 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 um, of playing and music and whatever because that would be embarrassing. And uh, when we get older, maybe when we're, in fifth, when we're in our 50s and we're releasing our like third DVD, we might include some of the the old Tegan and Sarah um, plunk band and some of the photos of Tegan with long hair and a rainbow chain and stuff like that. But you're not going to get any of those goodies yet. We don't want, we want you to come back for more. So we're going to really hold out. But um, anyway, this concert, you know, it was, it was kind of nerve wracking because we knew that this was going to be the real, um, the real centerpiece for the, for the DVD. So we were all like worried that, um, that in a year, that we would look back and all be like, oh God, why did I wear that shirt? Or why did my hair look like that? Or why do I make that face when I sing? I know, I know, I know. And so it's kind of funny now to actually be a year later looking back at it because, um, well, I personally am not having those thoughts. I'm really glad I picked an all black outfit. Although I do look like I'm from a from a drama geek company or something, like I'm gonna run out and strike a set, but, um, but I'm happy about it. Um. People that people were that that were at the concert will notice that the running order is different as I brought up, but also that all the all the kind of talking and banter in between the songs are gone. We did that on purpose just to irritate people. So now, if journalists buy the DVD and they watch the concert, they can't put in their article that we're twins who banter because we are not bantering; we're talking. We're like obsessed with chatting, as you can tell already. We talked through the whole thing already, but um, yeah, we edited it out all the. It wasn't really about the talking. We didn't talk a lot. Strong anyway. No, it wasn't strong, and we weren't. We didn't talk a ton at the concert because we. We knew that, you know, a year, ten years from now, it would probably not be relevant. So, so it's it's just um, been edited together to, you know, have the songs flow in. There's a few thank yous and stuff, but 